got him. There he is. Just look at that other bass with him. The fish just came off that bed right there. Come here. Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. Today we're going to talk about the top three pond lures that you need in order to catch a lot of big bass in ponds. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Every month I pick a random subscriber and I mail them one of these awesome bass hats. So subscribe to the channel and you're going to have a chance at winning a sweet bass hat. Now before we get started, I want you to know that this is obviously my opinion on the best lures that you have for pond. A lot of ponds are different, right? Some are muddy, some are clear, some have vegetation, some are wood. They're all over the place, but in my opinion, these three lures can cover you from top to bottom, everywhere in between, and they're gonna catch a lot of fish in ponds. So let's get started. So the first pond lure that I think you need to have when you go pond fishing is a chatterbait, right? This is a 3 8 ounce chatterbait, and really I think probably the best color for ponds all around is your simple green pumpkin. Sometimes I like to dye this tail chartreuse because a lot of times in ponds you're mimicking a bluegill. Bluegill is probably the number one bait fish in ponds that bass eat. Now again, it depends on where you're located. Some ponds have shad and shiners, but almost every pond has bluegill, and a great way to mimic bluegill is with a chatterbait. So the number one probably pond lure that I'm gonna recommend is a chatterbait. Now when it comes to fishing a chatterbait, typically you're gonna want some cloudy overcast conditions and or some wind in order to get the bass to really commit to the bait. If it's sunny and still, they're probably not gonna eat it unless you have maybe muddy water or maybe it's in the springtime. But uh, if you have some cloudy conditions, windy conditions, wind is always your best friend when it comes to throwing a moving bait like a chatterbait or spinnerbait. So remember that when you're out there fishing, wind is your friend with a chatterbait. Here we go. Oh, look at that. That is some beautiful slime. That is the magic of a pond. Look at that chatterbait though. Completely down that fish's throat. That's why you want to fish a chatterbait in a pond. Again, the key, you see we have a little breeze over here. That's perfect conditions for a chatterbait. A little bit of wind, a little bit of even a shadow uh, uh, on the water. Beautiful bass. Probably the most important thing to remember when you're fishing a chatterbait is make sure you vary your retrieve. Don't just straight bring that bait back without varying the retrieve. You wanna yo-yo the chatterbait a little bit. You wanna pop it let it get hung in some grass or some weeds, pop it out, pop it free, let it fall. That's really gonna trigger a bass to bite that bait. If you guys want some more chatterbait tips, check out this video right here. All right guys, let's talk about the second lure that I think is probably the best pond lure that you can ever have, and that is a pop bar style bait right this is a this is actually a strike strike king spit and shad and this is a phenomenal bait whenever you're fishing early mornings late in the evenings at night uh, during the middle of summer i mean this is a phenomenal pond bait and again this bait represents a bluegill really really well you can see this one i actually put a chartreuse and white tail on to really mimic a bluegill well and who doesn't love topwater bass fishing in general, right? So ponds are a perfect place for it. Pond bass love these. And I'm telling you, sometimes you can catch bass even in the middle of day 
on a, on a popper style bait like this. Um, and if not, then really focusing on shadows um, or fishing it in, in, in dark conditions, cloudy conditions, is a really good way to catch a lot of pond bass, the pop bar. There's really three different ways you can work a pop bar. The first way is to basically cast that bait out and walk the dog like you would a spook or a like Zara spook or a salmon, right? And you're gonna want short twi twitches that basically make that bait walk. Now I'm fishing a pretty small pop bar here and it's not walking as good as some of the bigger ones will. So keep that in mind too. If you wanna walk the bait, upsize your bait a little bit. It's gonna walk a little bit better. The other way to fish a pop bar is what I call a ploop. You know, you're making a plooping sound. And that's when you're basically gonna cast it out, let it sit out there, and you're gonna pop it on a slack line. And the slack line is really important. When you pop it on the slack line, that's what gets that bait to ploop. This is a great way to fish whenever you're fishing around bluegills. More of that ploop. It's like it makes a bubble. Okay, the third way to fish a pop bar is actually to make it spit. And when to make it spit, you actually want to work that bait with your line tight. Instead of popping the bait on slack line, you wanna pop the bait on uh, basically when your line is tight. So now if I do this, see how I'm keeping that line tight and it's making that bait spit instead of plute. See that, it's spitting water out in front. Oh, there's a stick. Those are the three different ways though you can catch bass on a pop bar. Now, the third way to catch pond bass and probably the most popular is a Cinco, right? Or a wacky rigged Cinco in particularly. This is actually a Bass Pro Shop Sticko, um, which I actually recommend this bait because it has about the exact same action and fall rate as a Cinco, um, but it's way less expensive. You can get a pack of 16 of these for like four or five bucks as opposed to getting nine of them for about nine bucks with the Gary Yamamoto Cinco. Now, the Cinco does catch them, but this bait is pretty much the exact same in action um, and I really, really like this bait. So the best thing about a Cinco is it literally catches fish in ponds, lakes, reservoirs, rivers. It's probably the most fish catching bait that there's ever been. And it, it's definitely a great pond bait. You literally, if you can't get bit, put a wacky rig Cinco on and you're going to get bit. Um, and the best thing about it is it's kind of a, a dumb lure to fish, right? You really just cast it out and let it do its thing. You just let it sink, let it flutter down, and that's when the bass is gonna get it. Now, another way, and one of my favorite ways to actually rig this bait, to actually fish this bait, is to cast it out and actually work it just below the surface. You're kind of popping it just below the surface and you'll actually see bass visibly come out and smack that bait. It's a really, really fun way to catch bass on a Cinco or a stick worm or a sticko or a young dinger whatever you want to get. So the third bait and definitely the most popular is a Cinco. Oh, there he is. Got him. Oh man, that's a good one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That is why the wacky rig Cinco. Oh yeah, it's such a good bait. Look at that thing. That's a good fish. Just look at that other bass with him. The fish just came off that bed right there. Come here, fish. <sighs> yep. Again, can't beat the wacky rig. It's a good fish. Chunky, thick. I bet that fish was a female that was hanging out deep off of one of these beds. There he goes. Here he 
got it. Oh, there he is. That's a decent one there. That's why the Senko is as deadly as it is. Come here, fish. Oh, yeah. There's just no denying it. The wacky rigged. Cinco, you just can't beat it for palm bass.